This is part four of the tutorial, How to Machine Knit the Everything Sweater. We measured, swatched, and calculated in part one, knit the back and bodice in part two, and the sleeves in part three. And in part four, we will put all the finishing touches on the sweater, and we reveal the secret of the magic number so you can use any yarn you want. Download the companion pattern from twistedyarns.com. The link is in the description below. This is where we started. And we went this way, then made this long lapel, and then down the side, and across the bottom, up the side, and across the top. These are the shoulders. This is the back of the neck. These are the sleeve holes. At this time, you can weave in the ends along the edge stitches of the outer edge. They will disappear as the stockinette stitch rolls slightly along the outer edge. Any ends along the arm openings may be used for seaming or later woven in along the seams. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to remove the scrap yarn because it's, it's all seamed at this point. So I'm just pulling out my waist yarn here. I want to just make sure I've cut all my stitches. Yes, I do. Beautiful seam, isn't it nice? And it's very flat. And now this one is a little different because this was cast on with a finished edge. So what I'm going to do is I can't really back it out that easily. So I'm going to cut it out. When I get to the final edges, Ooh, it came out. Look at that. How nice. Well, I can use this piece again too. I may have to cut a little bit on this end. I just want to check my seams and they're perfectly tensioned. Isn't that nice? So half your seaming is done already. So you only have to do the sleeves if you decide to put sleeves in. So when I did take out my waist yarn on the bottom, I did not catch that very last stitch. So I'm just going to pin it into place like so, because there is a seam that goes right up here, and I'll just tack that into the seam. And we are all set. Okay, this is the back of the neck on the sweater. And these two ends, one, this one is the, the cast on edge, and this is the bind off edge, or the scrapped off edge. And what we want to do is we want to join them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have it all laid out here, and we're going to kitchener this. And so I have my end that I left, my long end at the end, and I'm going to bring it up through the first stitch here on this side. And I'm going to leave the other end from the cast on edge tucked inside because I'm going to eventually need it to finish neatening this up when I when I wrap it up. Okay, and that was our last mark stitch. We can take that marker out. And I'm going to zoom in just a little so you can better see how I'm going to do the Kitchener stitch. I'm folding over this edge and I brought that yarn to the front. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go into this edge stitch here, which happens to be the very first stitch, and then coming out one full stitch over to start that row. And so right now I have a lot of yarn, but I'm going to be using it all up. I'm going to shorten this length up just a little. Okay. And I'm going to come back over here and go in where I came out of and then into the next loop. Now I'm making sure that I'm catching an open loop because I'm going to seam this right while it's together with the scrap yarn in it. And then I'm going to come back in where I came out of over here and up the next stitch. 
and I want to bring it so that the stitch is about the right tension. And I can continue just like this, going back and forth. And even when I'm done, I can tighten it up even more if I'd like. So back and forth. And I'm catching two bars. I'm going into the first one and I'm coming out the second one. But once again, I'm making sure that I'm in a stitch that has that full loop. So when I'm all done, it will close itself up. I don't even have to use um, stitch holders to keep it in place because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. There's exactly one stitch for each stitch on each side. So all I have to do is just advance one stitch at a time. So I got to the end and I removed all my removed all my waist knitting and I can adjust the tension on this row if I want. I think it'll fit right in when I give it a little wash. So I think I am done with that. The first thing you want to do to set in your sleeve properly is you need to do some measuring. First, you're going to match up the two ends right at the side and find the center top point of the sleeve and put a marker on it. Then you're going to measure down the side two and a half inches and you're going to place another marker there and do it on the other side two and a half inches. Make sure this is going to roll over a little bit and I didn't press this so just be aware of that and you're going to mark that. Now let's see what we have here. Can you see that whole thing? We have these two sides marked right there and right there. These are your underarm points. It's a little bit different than a regular sleeve. That is your underarm on this particular design. Okay? So keep that in mind. Don't make the mistake of putting your underarm there. That is not it. Now on the sleeve opening, this will match the center top point. Since I have finished the sweater, I have found a much better way to locate the underarm points on the armhole opening. These instructions are included in the Everything Sweater Companion pattern also. To locate the underarm points on the back and side sections, find the center point between the top, point A, and the bottom, point D, of the opening along the back section. Place a marker here. This is point B. Now do the same thing along the side section and mark point B. Measure three to three and a half inches below this marker and place another marker to indicate point C on both the back and side sections. You have two point C's and these are the underarm points. Remove the markers from point B on the back and the side sections as these are only used for guidance. First off, I am going to pin this to a secure part right here so I know that that is going to, that's stable. Then I'm going to come down to this side ah, and I'm going to pin this in place too. But I'm not going to move my markers. I'm going to leave those there. Well, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to use Taylor Tacks. I know this sounds really weird, but I just love my scrap yarn. And so after I've used it a couple of times, it gets a little worn. So I just make little lengths of yarn. I'm inserting my hook under both those sides and grabbing a little bit of meat. Okay, right where that marker is. I'm going to 
come down one more stitch right where the marker is. And I'm going to pull that through and tie it. And I'm going to pull it up tight. I call that a tailor tack. See the gap there? All of a sudden you could be a half an inch or an inch away. So I'm going to do the same thing over here because the yarn will pull up nice and snug the removable marker is just that. It's a marker, not really a stitch holder. Just tying them together. And so at this point, I'm going to work my way and find the center point of this. And I'm going to just even it out, bring this up along that line, find the center point on the green. This is actually cat. So there's my center point there. So this is what's going to be on the center point of this half. So if I bring these two markers together, here's my center point here. So there I can bring those together, slip my hook through those two parts, grab another one of my free tailor tacks, and tie it together. Then I find the half of the half, and that's getting pretty easy because it's getting to be a shorter distance. So I'm going to find where this point is, and that's going to fall right about on the floor. And so I'm going to pull these two, and I'm going to find where this meets up, and I've got that one marked, this half. So I'm going to come to the edge stitch here, stitch under there, and stitch right there. And I'm going to continue to tailor tack this whole arm side right into place. We have just completed putting all the tailor tacks in. I'm at about one inch apart, and that means that I can start seaming it. And as I do the seaming, I can make sure that I ease, it's easy to ease in this short distance and that way I will get a perfect fit every single time and I can start just about at any point that I want. I have even tailor tacked my um, underarm seam but what, what you also can do it allows you to try it on and see if there's any adjustments that are necessary before you you go to the final part and sew everything together. I personally like to start at the shoulder. And so here's my shoulder and there's my first marker. So I'm going to take out the little stitch marker and I'm going to find my place right here, very near the center. And I'm looking on this side, I'm going to be making sure that I get under the open stitch to start and I'm going to leave half my yarn on that side and half on this side and then I'm going to cross over to the first stitch on the main body of the garment not the sleeve so I've started in the sleeve the top of the sleeve and I've moved over now I'm going to go over one more come back to the side and go under two loops and come back over here where I came in and came out. I'm going to go back under there. Let's take a closer look. Continue to work back and forth, easing the sleeve into the arm opening between each set of tailor tacks. On the sleeve, make sure to pick up the open stitches. And continue on all the way around the sleeve. As you reach a tailor tack, just pull it out. Because now I can see what I'm doing, because I'm right there. And you see how neat that seam is? 
using tailor tacks. When you are done setting the sleeve into the arm side, continue to seam the underarm seam and the sleeve with the mattress stitch. Now that our sweater is assembled, I want to point out a few things. As I said before, this is an unusual sleeve and armhole shape. Once it's seamed, the top of the sleeve looks like a little point, and the armhole appears to curve under, even though it is actually a straight edge. That's what makes this sweater so fascinating to make and to wear. And now, the secret of the magic number is that you know the secret. You learned it in part one. Your magic number is unique to the yarn you choose and the gauge you achieve on your specific machine. It is calculated as the stitches per inch times your shoulder to shoulder measurement plus an inch, rounded up or down to the nearest even number. So when you substitute a yarn, just figure out its magic number and substitute it in the pattern whenever the pattern calls for the magic number. I hope you enjoyed making the everything sweater. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos. Happy machine knitting!